Welcome to Impact the World, a podcast from West Park Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. This is where we discuss topics related to how we can all love God, love people, and impact the world. Here's your host, Tara Hayes. Welcome back to Impact the World. Uh, We're glad to have you today. Again, my name is Tara Hayes. I'm the host. And um, we're in the middle of a series of the Biblical Support Ministries. We took a week off last week. But this week, we're going to talk about Grief Share. And we've got Pastor Al with us. And he's Hello, folks. <laughs> hey, Pastor Al. It's good to have you back it's again. It's good to be here again. It's always good to have you. And our special guest is Tony Sawyer, and he is over the ministry at Grief Share. Tony, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. I'm originally from Tennessee, but I was gone for about 30 or 40 years working for a company, and then I, we came back. And when we came back, we wanted to live in Knoxville to be close to all the things from in Knoxville and UT and all that. And then I became a member of, of uh, West Park about six years ago. Okay. We've been here seven years, and six years ago we became members. And um, I have my wife, Debbie. Uh, she works down at Ace Hardware Mercantile. Is it that one over on Hardin Valley? It is. I love She's that She's there about every day. <laughs> they have a great business over there. So advertising for them, I guess. There you go. Free advertising <laughs> for yeah. Elder Ace. Yeah. It's a great place. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Then my my son lives in uh, Virginia now, but he works in D.C. He's an attorney, but he's in the uh, lobbyist side of the business now on the financial side. Oh, wow. So he does financial lobbying. And uh, just got married two years ago, and we're looking for the first uh, grandchildren, but there's no hint of it yet. Mm, Might have to throw in some prodding. Oh, my wife does that on a regular (laughs) basis. (laughs) <laughs> that's her other full-time job. Yeah, that's her, yeah, correct. <laughs> well, that's great. So how did you get involved with Grief Share? Well, when I joined here, and I've been uh, always involved in churches I've been in before. I've been a Stevens minister at church in Minnesota, so I wanted to be involved here. Yeah. So I put my name on one of those pages one day about what you want to get into, and then Larry Bradley called me. Oh, yeah, Larry. And uh, Larry was doing Grief Share at that time, and he says, well, why don't you come in and just help me out? So I did that, and uh, after I got into it, like the second session, he said, well, I'm going to retire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, surprise. <laughs> so you need to— You didn't know you were— <laughs> <laughs> So how about taking it over? So I said, okay, let's try it, and I did. And uh, I can tell you we had our first session of the fall last night, and mm. I really look forward to it each time because of the impact it has on people that come to Grief Share and what that ministry does. Yeah. If, if I could jump in just a minute, uh, you know, that story's just about complete. Uh, I, I recall that in, when Larry Bradley was over the ministry and, and he and I were talking and just talking about, you know, making sure that the, the ministry had a, had a solid foot, footing, especially from a leadership standpoint. And, and that's when Tony's name first came up. Mm. And so I just want everyone to know how much of a blessing it has been to me personally, uh, but also to our church, Mm -hmm. uh, to have someone with Tony's background. Uh, As he mentioned, he's been trained as a Stevens ministry, which is a wonderful ministry of support. We've elected to go the the grief share direction, and and Tony's going to share some of that. But uh, Lord is is always providentially looking out for his ministry. Yes. And to to have Tony come back to Knoxville, to come back to West Park, and to be willing uh, to jump into Grief Share has just been a huge blessing for our church. And I just want to personally thank him so much for continuing to lead up one of the very important ministries we have here at West Park mm-hmm. to come and walk with people in their time of need. Yeah. So great job, man. Yeah. Looking forward to continuing to see the Lord bless what you're doing in this ministry. Well, and I just want to echo that because this is a very, it's a very outward facing ministry. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of people that come into Grief Share outside of the body of West Park. We do. And I mean, there are a lot of West Park people that come and I know what a special ministry this is. I mean, just from a, a personal standpoint, my, my mom has been through grief share and it makes me emotional because yeah, yeah. I know how much it helped my mom. It and does. it does, you know, so we're going to talk a lot about how special this ministry is, right. but we're so very blessed to have you leading this ministry. 
Hey, man, I want to piggyback on what Taurus just said. Um, when we think about grief share, and again, we're going to go really deep into what grief share is. Uh, but one of the things that, there's a lot of things in life that touches each and every one of us. Mm. And, uh, and God has promised that he's going to walk with us in no matter what phase of life, whatever comes our way. And so no matter who you are or where you are in life, uh, this is an area that potentially will, uh, if you live long enough, <laughs> Yeah. Will make itself known. It will. And it will. you mentioned Tara, your uh, your mom. Uh, my wife has has sat through and gone through the uh, uh, the ministry as well, and just a profound impact, uh, and just a neat little community. And again, I, I'm just looking forward to hearing some of the testimonies mm -hmm. that uh, Tony's going to share uh, of, of the individuals that have come through this ministry and have been touched. Yeah, thank you guys very much. And I'm just happy that I can be a vessel for the Lord. Mm. to reach out to everybody going through grief. That's all I want to do is just be the vessel of him working with them. Wow. That's what my that's how I see myself. Well, and I think with that in mind, with that humility, the Lord is is definitely using you and using this ministry. So, yeah, I look forward to hearing some of the testimonies and the, and the ways that it have has touched people's lives. So tell us a little bit about, so how often do you meet? How long is the program? Just give us some basic overview of the program. <clears throat> okay, before I do that, I'll give you the structure of how it actually started. Okay. Oh, that'd be great. Steve Grissom and his wife, I think her name's Cheryl, it just backs up a little bit. Back in 1993, they'd been, both of them been through very painful divorces, and they live in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Because of that, they started first divorce care. Which we've talked about. Which we also have here as a ministry at our yes. church. And then five years later, all the input and things they've been hearing from the people they've been involved with, there was a real need for somebody to have a support group, develop one for people going through grief. Mm. So in 1998, it was it was developed. Okay. It's only offered, and maybe divorce care is the same way, I'm not sure. It's only offered through churches. And the reason for that, they wanted to keep Christ the center of that, always of what Grief Share is all about. As Al said, the Lord walking through us with grief. Yes. That's how, that's how it was developed. Here at, uh, at West Park, uh, Grief Share is underneath the ministry of Al's community group. And then we have, I think, also James Lynch is involved in it. And then I'm the facilitator. Um, I have two people that help me, uh, Carol Jones, who's also a member here, and James Hamilton, who's also a member here. Yes. So both of them, and I think Carol came to our church from being involved in Grief Share. I think and, she was in my mom's class. <laughs> she, I think she might have been, yep. <laughs> and we've had several people do that. So anyway, we meet, we have two sessions per year. We have one in the winter and spring, and we have one in the fall. We just started our fall session last night, first session. And uh, we have 13 sessions. Uh, they last 90 minutes each. And um, I'll go into more detail about some of that later on. But uh, um, the one thing that I've been thinking about, and I haven't really developed a way to do this yet, is to have a third session maybe, and maybe have it in the summer, and maybe have it during the day where more people might be able oh, to, to come yeah. to that. Because I run into situations where a lot of the elderly people, they don't want to drive, they don't want to at, drive night. at night, especially in the winter and the fall when it gets really dark yeah. and whatever. So that might be an avenue for us to do that. But I haven't. It's a great idea. So it, it's a thought, but I haven't put together the plan to do that yet. Wow. So that's kind of how it operates. That's good. So at each meeting, you say they're 90 minutes long. Mm -hmm. Is there a book, one particular book that you're going through? Is there a video? and? Homework. I'll tell you, there's a little bit of homework if you want to do it. My mom was so excited about homework. <laughs> yeah, there is. There She'll is. laugh when she hears that, but we joke. Yeah. My mom, yeah. she enjoys the homework. Yeah. Everybody has a workbook, which is published by Grief Share uh, International. And all of our materials and stuff come from them. So we, they have a very tight structure that they follow, and we follow that. And actually, the, the, you have three, I'd say, components of Grief Share. One of them is the video, which is usually about 30 to 40 minutes long. The second part is the group discussion. So we have group discussion after each video. And this is, I'll get into this more, but this is a key healing area right here when you get into that group discussion. Then you have, as you mentioned, the homework. <laughs> so to keep things going during the week and to keep everything focused and to, to complement it, each day, five days a week, you have a, an exercise you do. It starts out with a Bible verse, 
it's all connected to what that week's session's about. Mm -hmm. And it gives you questions to answer and things to think about and ways to reach out and do more things in your grief journey. But it works very, very well, and they complement each other very well. I think the probably the hardest thing for a participant is to have the discipline to do those exercises. Mm -hmm. Now, what I do at the, begin, at the beginning of each session to help reinforce that I pick one of the days, and I go through one of the days as if we were doing it together. Oh, that so that's a Just good example show them, for people. Show, show them how to do it and yeah. let them talk about it and whatever. So in case somebody missed it, they get at least one of the days in the right. session. And, it, and I think it does help that way. I think that's a great idea. And I love that it's grounded in Scripture because, yeah. as we've already said, that's the key. That's the key. Really, is walking through the grief mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit and Jesus in our lives. Yeah. Um, so... With that in mind, do you have people um, that you – do people come that aren't believers? Have you seen that? Well, first of all, Grief Share is open to everyone. Christ is always open to all of us, right. no matter what our position in life is. So you don't have to be a member of West Park. You don't have to be a member of any church. You don't have to even be a believer. What we, what we think and we believe and we've seen it happen – is that we can have people come to us mm. and they learn about the Lord and what he's doing in everyone's life and can do in your life and what he promises us and what his gospel message is all about. You see people really get interested in that. So I would say the majority of the vast majority of people that come probably are believers, but we do have people come who are not believers. Well, then you have the potential for not even just working through grief, but seeing even more life change. Yes, I mean, correct. that is life changing correct. at that point. And they, they design it to be this way also yeah. because they want it to be totally Christ-centered, God walking with us all during our life through the good times and the most difficult time of our lives when we have grief. As Al mentioned, grief will strike every single one of us if we live long enough. Yeah. And more than once. Beautiful. That's true. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I think I'm sure when you share some testimonies with us, there will be people that you will talk about, um, you know, in a confidential sort yeah, of way, yeah. but that have been through multiple losses yep. back to back and just have been through some really hard times. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's not unusual uh, for participants uh, to participate in multiple sessions Correct. of Grief Share. Again, that community aspect of uh, being able to uh, walk. I, you, you mentioned earlier the term a grief journey. And in a lot of ways, it is a journey. It is a journey. And that journey it looks different uh, for different people. And so there's some who come and, and the Lord works graciously in a, in a fairly quick way uh, to help them on that journey. But then there's others it just takes a little longer, and that's okay uh, because Definitely. that's what we're here to do. Definitely, absolutely. Well, and I would say, you know, I think for my mom, that was one really good thing to see. Grief hits everybody differently. I mean, there are certain ways that it hits across the board, mm -hmm. of course. But I think being in Grief Share helps you see, okay, I'm not alone, Correct. and I'm not the only one going through this mm -hmm. when you think – and it feels that way, like right. Right. nobody understands what I'm going through. And, and I'll take that lead on there, Tara, to go to this, is what we see in Grief Share, the powerful components of Grief Share as far as the healing part. Number one, you're walking through the journey with the Lord. He's leading us through the journey. He's mm -hmm. with us in, in that room and during the week every single day. Secondly, and this is something that's – if, if, there's a couple of people last night that came in were, that were in the counseling field. And they mention you don't really understand the impact of grief until it happens to you right. individually. Yeah. Even though they're counselors, they're struggling with it. So what happens is many times people who are in grief share classes, they come and they find out that we have an environment, an atmosphere where everybody in that room can understand exactly what they're dealing with. A lot of times in life, uh, especially a few weeks after the uh, loved ones passed away, People fade away. Uh, yeah. Your friends don't want to talk about it. Your family doesn't want to talk about it. You don't really have anybody to talk to, but you're still you're still struggling very very badly. Yeah. So this gives a, a place where they can come in peace and safety and talk about what they're going through. Right. Right. Then we 
heal together. Being able to talk about your grief is one of the most compelling parts of the journey and the the progression to from mourning to joy. So not everybody is able and wants to talk about it initially, as Al mentioned. Right. Some people sit back and they're very quiet. We rarely ever go through a session of 13 weeks where by the end the person is not talking about it, at least in some way. Some people from the first day forward. Now, like last night, I think we had 10 or 12 people there, and last night every single person was able to talk about it. I think that's fantastic. fantastic. Because they do, you have that safe place to, to talk about, and, and others understand what you're talking about. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and sometimes believers are under the mistaken, I don't know, mindset that— um, that we don't have grief. Right. Uh, but when you read the, the Psalms and the, the, the Psalms of lament, especially as um, the, the psalmist would cry out to the Lord in the midst of their troubles. And, uh, and, and so it's not unchristianly. Right. <laughs> that's I like that word. word. Not at all. It's a new one. <laughs> all right. Okay, good. No, no, not Sometimes at all. when you're from Louisiana, you have to make up stuff. <laughs> but you, but you it's know, a southern it's, word. Yeah, it, it's, it's one of those things where. Um, the Lord wants us to come and to cry out to mm-hmm. him and to put our petitions before before him. He is a God of sorrows who understands in many ways what we're going to. So, again, everyone's unique. We will treat you uniquely, but we will also make sure that you're part of our community. Yeah. Right. And I am glad that you said that. I think um, people, because in the in the Christian faith, well, we're supposed to be joyful mm-hmm. be, in mm-hmm. all things and in all trials. And so we think, you know, I've known people that have been going through grief that have said to me literally two weeks after their loved one passes, well, I should be okay now. And I'm thinking, <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, you are just, no. this is just the beginning. Just the beginning. And I think I'm glad that we're having this conversation and removing that, I don't know, stigma right. of, grief um even as i was going through grief i learned a lot about carrying grief and joy at the same time yep correct you talk about a stigma and again i'm sure tony's going to talk about this man you had 10 last night Mm -hmm. wonderful that is um i'm I'm gonna ask you a question i'm gonna test a little hypothesis okay okay of those 10 how many were men one oh one I would say typically we see at least 80% of the people there are ladies. Men. Now, men, let me speak to you right now. <laughs> Guys, um, there's a time to be stoic and strong and manly, but there's a time to let your heart melt before the Lord and be willing to be vulnerable. And so one of the things I pray about personally as I think about grief share is that our men would, would would recognize that this is a place for you as well to be healed. And so our appeal goes out to you. Absolutely. Uh, don't hide behind this false picture of strength and not be willing to be vulnerable and uh, to walk this path out with fellow believers who will give you the support that you need. Absolutely, and I would... Uh add to that that grief share does those two things grief share does a very good job in the first video of taking us through the situation to where as christians how do we react to grief should we grieve how do we grieve whatever and they make it very honest and 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 forward yes we hurt just like everyone else does Mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean we're not a good christian if we are hurting right so and the lord promises to walk through us with grief and he says we should mourn Yes. So we're going through the mourning part. The second part about men, I think especially men that are closer to my age, we were raised in a period of time where men are not supposed to cry and all these kind of things. But I think what happens is that is a real detriment to men healing through grief because they don't come to these sessions and they don't have the chance to heal with the Lord walking beside them. So they suffer a lot right. individually. So in, I would add to what Al said there is that in no way should men feel like that this is not a good place to go. It is the best place they could go because the Lord is inviting them to come to this place Mm -hmm. and to walk with it. And uh, the men that do come, I think they would all of them 100% tell you how much it really helped them out to do that. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so all you guys out there. Come on, guys. If you're going through <laughs> grief, and we all will, right. uh, please come because it would really help you. You don't have to talk. You can just sit there and listen. Uh, we would just love to have you there to see what the Lord is offering us to help us. It's support from the Lord. Lord right, yes. and there's never any, I'm glad you said there's not any pressure at any time. No. Nope. They're never going to force anybody to talk. No. Nope. But would be encouraged because I think even just for the men who are going through grief, it would be helpful to them, but it's helpful for the people that are around the Absolutely. men. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't, if you're not going through it, you don't always know exactly what to say or yeah. when to say something. Um, you know, even though like when my dad passed away, my mom and I were both going through the grief at the same time. It's very yeah. different. Obviously yeah. my yeah. mom yeah. had lost her yeah. husband and I had lost my father, but Sometimes I was like, I don't know if I should say something because I don't want to make her more yeah. sad. Yeah. yeah. Or I don't, you know, what if she's doing really well? And I, you know, and I think, so I think for grief share, that was a, a good place. And again, my mom and I had a great yeah. relationship through all that noise too, but um, it was good because they understood that community understood better what she was going through as a spouse. Yeah. Because I think a lot of the people in her class were spouse, you know, mm, yep, had lost sure, a spouse. Sure. Um, so I think that's good. So I think the men, it's not just for your benefit. It's also for the people that you your do family, life with. Your family, your friends, everybody right. you know. Right. It's helpful to them. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, let's just talk a little bit. I mean, I think a lot of people would go directly to uh, I've lost a spouse or a, or a parent or but what kind of people do you typically see I think you've probably seen all kinds of people in grief share we've seen all kinds so typically what you would see this is grief share is for anyone who has lost a loved one it could be a family it could be a friend it could be a co-worker through death that's mm -hmm. what it's for and uh, anybody that's gone through that the where grief comes from is the fact that we love that person so much, mm -hmm. and now we've lost them. Yeah. So the pain comes from the loss of that loved one that we have. And it's very real. So we see people come to us that um, have lost fathers, husbands, brothers, children. We've seen the full gamut of that. And one thing that's interesting is that it, when you're going through the grief journey, it kind of depends on where you're at in the timeline of the journey. First of all, I would say there's no specific timeline for grief, for sure. It goes on for years and years, and the, two, the true pain never goes totally away. Right. It gradually gets replaced by loving memories. <laughs> but we see people come to us with all kinds of losses. Sometimes, as uh, I think one of you guys mentioned earlier, it could be somebody who's going through multiple griefs. I think last night we had a, a lady there who's got like a husband and a mother in like a two-month period oh, just wow. recently. So those kind of things happen. Yeah. And so uh, when you have compound grief or multiple griefs, it makes it even more right. difficult for the person going through grief. Yeah, because you've not made it to a, a I, I think of as a breathing point <laughs> yeah. with the first one. I mean, sometimes you feel like you're just catching your breath. Yeah, absolutely. Um, wow. Yeah. So I kind of have two different questions in my mind, okay. and they kind of go in two different directions. <laughs> that, that's so, okay. Which way do I want to go with this? Um, but if somebody, have you seen people in in grief share that have lost someone that maybe they didn't have a good relationship with? Yes. And and how do you work through that with them? Well, what grief share is very good at is to take us through all the different situations that can happen like that. So. When a person comes to grief share and they're going through that, they're dealing with two things. They're dealing with the fact that they've lost somebody that they love. Now, they may have a difficult relationship and whatever, there, but there's still a root of love there. Right. So they're dealing with that. And then they're also dealing a lot of times with the guilt of a situation to where that relationship wasn't what it should be and they want it to be. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a big burden. Yeah, it is. And if I could also jump in on that, that's a great question, by the way. I'm glad you asked it. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, the Lord is sovereign and, and he's caring for us and he's, he's creating situations 
uh, to get us oftentimes to look deeply into our own lives. And so one of the things that uh, we're trying to build in the interconnectedness of these ministries under our biblical support are opportunities to direct people to uh, to people who have been gifted to help them walk through right. difficult paths. So, uh, so someone may come to uh, grief share uh, unexpectedly, and and maybe uh, they were uh, uh, left with responsibilities that they'd never had before, and they're at a loss. Yeah. What do I do Absolutely. next? And so, out of the grief share ministry we can help direct them to financial planning or to biblical counseling yeah. uh, or to any number of other helping ministries uh, that we have out of, the, out of the church because of their specific situation uh, and to help them to understand why God has them in this particular situation. And I would say it's common in almost every session that we'll have at least one person that will have some situation similar to what I was talking about that we will pass into counseling or pass into some other ministry here at the yeah. church or somewhere else maybe to help them out because they're dealing with it, something maybe outside or adjacent to the grief share part yeah. of it. That's why I love that we're spotlighting these ministries in these podcast mm-hmm. episodes because I think there's so much, and I love that they're called, Alice called them the helping ministries. That's what they are. Because they really do. I mean, they're at the heart of changing lives and helping people and working together. And um, <laughs> I mean, if you know Pastor Al, you just think it's like the busiest man in the world. <laughs> I think but, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, but when you sit down and you really break down all these different ministries, they all work together so well. We're, and I love what God is doing through it. We're helping so many people here. I love this that. church and outside of church through yeah. these ministries. Yeah. Well, and I know we've even had people that have come to West Park because of grief share or divorce care, you know, all of these yeah. different ministries. So yeah. I would say it's, I, I can't count how many people we've had that went from grief share to belong here or at least attend here, but there's been several of them for sure. Wow. Lots of them. And they, but what happens is in grief share, one of the powerful healing elements is they become very close to each other. Right. In that room, they become very close. We become a family is what we become. Mm-hmm. And then they start helping each other out. And then through helping each other out, it's healing them. It's helping the other person. But it's creating that togetherness that we need to have. That's fantastic. As, as, as we go forward then. So creating it's very a powerful. Community. Okay, yeah. I've been sitting on this long enough. I'm just going to jump in. Come on, so, Pastor Al. So lots of neat things going on. You just talked about the family aspect. Uh, one of the neat things that I think Tony has brought to this ministry and the insight the Lord has given to him is during the summer, you have like a little reunion. Why don't you talk about that reunion? I, you know, yep. it just, I just get excited every time you share, you share about the reunion with me. Well, what, what we've done the last two sessions, because in Grief Share, the structure of Grief Share itself, when a person quits attending, goes through the class and there's no more classes, there's no continuation from Grief Share itself. So what I've recognized, and I think this is what Pastor Al's talking about, is when they leave, they're not completely through the journey, and we still want to maintain that community and that togetherness. Right. So what I've done the last two times is we've had a little luncheon, invite them all to a luncheon. So we go down to Aubrey's or somewhere, and we just have a luncheon. We sit around and talk, okay, it's been four or five or six weeks since we had our last session. How are you doing? How are things going? Are you still talking to each other and all that? So oh, that, I love that. that is a way to keep people together. What I'm working on right now, and I haven't initiated it yet, but I've done the, some of the foundation work, is I'm going back and getting a roster from all the classes that I've done. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to reach out to every one of those classes, just individually. Or I mean, it's probably a group email, but individually, how are you doing? Uh, can we help you in any way, whatever? And then I think t- two years ago or two and a half years ago, we had a reunion for all the people from the first three years. Wow. Two and a half years, maybe, that had been in grief share. Al came there. <laughs> we had them all back here. And we had a pretty good attendance. I was worried that people wouldn't come to that after they'd been out for a while, but they yeah. did. And just talked to each other, and they're still friends and all that. So I want to find a way, and I think the Lord is kind of leading me to try to find a way that we can keep people together Connected. after they leave grief share. Yeah. Now, a lot of them are staying together because I know there's groups that formed here inside this <laughs> church, and nearly every one of them went through grief share. 
Wow. And they bec- they became very close to each other, and some of them became members here, and now they're close. And and uh, so that's that's powerful to see those kind of things happen. And that's that's the thing I think that I reach back to the men. We want to see the same things yeah. happen with the men. Yeah. And I would say to the men and and to the ladies also, the hardest step of grief shower is like anything else. You got to take the first step. Yeah. The first so, time. So when people walk in that door the first night, I tell them you've already accomplished the first, the hardest part. Yeah. That's the first step. That's coming here. It really is. It yeah, is. Just coming here. Because you don't know what to expect. Yeah. You don't know what to expect. There's always a fear of, you know, things. And back again on what Tara mentioned earlier is we don't, we try very hard not to force anybody into an uncomfortable situation. So if they don't feel like talking, they don't have to. If they don't feel like sharing, they don't have to. We want that to be something that's voluntary on their part when they're ready to to release right. whatever that is. And uh, so that's that's kind of how we that's how it's structured, and that's what we try to do. Well, that's neat. I love that you're you're forming community. We are, it's, which goes back to another ministry. You know, right. I mean, <laughs> I love, but I love that the interconnectedness. You know, of mm-hmm. um, of how that works. I, I I think that's fantastic. And I know you also do special sessions like. How to face the holidays? We and do that kind of thing. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, the holidays around Thanksgiving and Christmas, particularly, are the are the hardest parts of the year for anybody going through grief share. And it's not just the first years. A lot of people mm-hmm. say the second year is even harder than the first. Yeah, because the first year is so much chaos and all that. But we have uh, one session, which we'll do. Pro- I'm trying to select a date right now. We'll do it in probably the close to the end of November, sometime before Thanksgiving, where we'll have a grief share for the holidays. It specifically talks about the things that can happen to us during the holidays that bring that grief back mm. to us. Right. Um, certain things that happened around Thanksgiving or Christmas or the fact that my mom's not here for this Christmas, all those kind of things that can just smack you all at once. And it can really throw you into a tailspin again, even though it might have been in some cases years. Years. Yeah. years. It can happen years. So we have that. Um, there's also one... It's kind of like a lead on to the normal grief share. It's called the loss of a spouse, specifically for people who have lost a spouse. Uh, we may do that next spring, maybe do that one. But there are things like that that we have that are in adjacent to and supportive of the main grief share. And those are really for people that have already been through the main program. It, it's the probably thirteen week program. More, it's more beneficial for them. It's more for them, I think. But sometimes what we find out is that we pick up somebody that has not been through it. Oh, okay. And uh, so we're, we're trying to reach people from every, okay, every angle we possibly can. <laughs> well, that's really good to know because yeah. I think that um, helps people realize I don't have to have gone through the, no. the greater program to yeah. sit through one of those. No, I mean, it's probably makes it more understandable if you have, but right. it's not necessary. And um, so that, that's what I would say. It might be a good introduction. Right. Yeah. Well, and I know that you're going you're gonna to ask about you know, where we're going and what our needs are. Uh, you know, Tony's just talked about the things that he wants to do. And he's talked a little bit about uh, the two members of our church that have uh, partnered with him. But but we're always looking for people to that, that have a heart for this ministry. Uh, there's tons of opportunities. Uh, Tony and his team can't do this alone. Right. So I, my, one of my prayers is that as you've listened to this podcast and uh, you hear the excitement in the midst of grief. Let me <laughs> right. say that again. Mm-hmm. You hear excitement in the midst of grief because we know, again, the Lord is using uh, this dark side of our night of our soul mm. to reach out and demonstrate his love. Yep. But but if, if you have a heart uh, or you're looking for an opportunity to serve, reach, reach out to Tony. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a lot of things we need to start and continue doing well. But in order to do that, we, we're going to need that help. Yeah, absolutely. And there is there is one thing I want to ask about as far as the program, and then we can talk more okay. about that. Um, if a person, I know you can come in the middle of the thirteen weeks. It's you cyclical. Can. So you, if you, if you don't start until the middle, then you can start the beginning. You don't have to start at the beginning of the thirteen weeks. Correct. We've had many, many, many people, and almost in every session, we have people that come in at any time. For example, you might have a situation where this is 13 weeks long and somebody just lost their husband or something the last couple of months within that period, and they'd reach out to us and they want to start coming. So we always invite them to come. 
And then what happens is they, 99% of the time, they'll follow on with the next full session. But people can come at any time. Uh, certainly it might be maybe a little easier to understand it all if you come the first session all the way through, but you don't have to. You don't have There's to. a very good structure to it. So uh, people are welcome anytime from any place. We love to have people come. Great, great. So I wanted to clear if, that up just to make sure people understand, you know, even though you say you've started, it's not too late to come. No. I would say to anybody out there listening to this, if you know, if you yourself are experiencing grief or you know anyone experiencing grief, please reach out to us. It doesn't matter when it is. Reach out to us. We want to help you find the Lord so he can walk mm. through this journey with you. Yeah. Oh, I guess we should mention what night and what time oh. you meet. <laughs> That's kind of pertinent information. <laughs> good, 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 very good question. I'm sorry I left that out. Well, it's fine. I, I could have mentioned it too. Well, we, we meet on Tuesday nights on the fall session when we're going through now for 13 weeks. It started last night. It runs through all the way till December the 6th. We will not meet the week of uh, Thanksgiving because of all Thanksgiving activities. And we meet from 6.30 until 8 p.m. in room 206. It's a little tricky right now getting to 206 (laughs) because of all the construction. But the best way is to come in by the road up here, Park Church, next to the soccer field, come all the way around to the back where the construction's at back there, and come in from that side. We'll have a sign out there. Sometimes I might be out there, somebody else is out there trying to direct people in. But... uh, We'd love to have anybody join us next Tuesday night with the next session. Well, that would be fantastic. Yep. So are there any other um, testimonies just from Grief Share that you can think of that you haven't gotten a chance to share that you would like to share? Well, what I would say first, uh, one thing that we want to make sure we cover, is I think many times about people that are going through grief without having either Grief Share or the Lord and or the Lord mm-hmm. for non-believers how hard it must be for those people to go through this. It's so, imagine. so difficult. Yeah. But what Grief Share does, a lot of times, I'd say most of the time, the people going through grief don't understand how it affects us in mm-hmm. every imaginable way, physically, mentally, spiritually, all of our relationships. When grief happens, everything changes. It starts all kinds of changes in place. So grief it's takes traumatic. Grief share takes a three sixty look at grief, how it affects us, and helps us to understand. Well, when I meet somebody at work and they won't talk to me anymore, why? What might be the reason for that? Mm-hmm. How do I respond to that? Because a lot of times people on the other side are not comfortable talking about grief, and they will avoid us. Right. Things like that happen. So grief share takes us through all three sixty of how things happen and how they've changed oh, wow. and, and the better we can understand things then the better we can work through the journey and back on the journey again in the in grief share and i think what the lord wants us to do is it's a journey from mourning and he wants us to mourn because it says in the bible there's a time for mourning yes he wants us to mourn but he doesn't want us to stay in that state forever mm-hmm. so it's mourning to joy Mm. And it won't happen in 13 weeks. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we will be able to see definite help. So some of the testimonies I would say that we've seen, we've seen people come in that were so, so devastated that they could barely even talk about their situation. And then by the end of that 13 weeks, they're talking to people openly in the class. Mm. People are talking to each other. They're helping each other. They might be going to, even going out to lunch to each other and whatever. And the thing I would say, the first time they came in, they see no hope Mm. that they can ever get away from the intense pain and chaos they're in now. But by the end of that 13 weeks, they won't be there yet for sure because it takes years to get through grief. But they will see that there is hope. Mm. That's what we see happen. And so we've had several people, I think, in that situation. We've had men come into the class when we can get men to come that they will open up and cry in the class Mm. and be so happy that they were able to come and and to experience the love of the Lord helping them through the journey and to see that there is help out there. Wow. Tony's put out an appeal that if if you know of anyone uh, that is struggling with grief, uh, to let us know or to let them know about our class. But it, it would not hurt us also if, if, if you would maybe even come with them yeah. and, and just that does sit happen. through that with them. 
talk about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah I think you didn't you come to one class. I did. <laughs> she came to one class with her mom. Yeah, or I maybe did. a couple. Yeah. So absolutely, if you know someone, and a lot of times that person on that's going through the grief will not have the courage yet, or the energy yet, or even think about going to grief share. But if you could bring that person, we've had several people bring people to the class. We had one lady who brought two members of her family with her, wow. and they all three went with it together, and it helped all of them. Oh, yeah. So if you know somebody, please bring them. Um, you, you, if you want to bring them to the first couple of sessions and not do all 13, that's fine. Just the main thing is that we can get them to come to Grief Share because it's so powerful. And I think what I see also in especially the elderly group is that a lot of them don't want to drive at night, as I mentioned earlier. So if you could mm-hmm. drive them here, bring them here, that's also powerful. We've had people do that. Yeah. Yeah. So again, if you're looking for an opportunity to participate in this ministry, there's there's tons of ways. You could be that friend yeah. to help someone work through this just by picking them up, bringing them to class, encouraging them to continue to be that sounding board for them in between sessions. Uh, so there's tons of ways uh, that we can participate uh, in this ministry of grief, and, and we're really appealing to you. Uh, pray about that, and if mm. the, the Lord would have you participate, contact the church. They'll put you in touch with Tony, and we can talk about how you can become an active participant in this ministry. Absolutely. Yeah. There's so many ways that we can be of help to people, and yeah. a lot of times they're sitting in home, maybe by themselves, going through all this grief, and they have no support. That's sad. Just to be able to, I, I wish everybody that's in Knoxville <laughs> would fill up our room next week. <laughs> It'd be the best thing that could happen to us. Yeah. And because uh, we would find a way to deal with it, but that's what I hope happens because, I could, again, as I said earlier, I feel so sorry for the people that don't have Grief Share or some support group like Grief Share, and they don't realize that the Lord is standing there and says, I will walk through this with you. I will right. take you through it. Every single day I'll take you through it because I, I, I understand right. where you're at. Right. He understands it more than anybody else does, what yeah. we're going through, what our feelings are. He understands right. all those feelings. Well, it is a very powerful ministry. Very powerful. And I'm so thrilled that we have, have it at West Park and have that to offer our, our body and our community. Absolutely, absolutely. There are several churches in Knoxville that have grief share. So sometimes when somebody contacts us like on week two or week three or whatever, and they, they say there's another ch- the church that's got it, we just work that out with ever, what they feel comfortable with. Yeah. It doesn't matter to us where they go as long as they are going. That they're going. And I would say, I don't know if I covered this earlier or not, I would say the vast, probably at least half the people, more than half the people probably, that come don't belong to West Park. Mm. They belong to other churches around here. And they find out about West Park. How, how do they find out about us? We advertise in the bulletin. We send a letter out to everybody that's lost loved ones in the church in the last two or three years. But you'd be surprised. There's two or three people last night in our class of 10 or 12 that said they saw the Grief, Shine, Grief Share sign driving by West Park, and that's how they contacted us. It's amazing how I, you never know how it's going to happen. That makes me happy since I'm the one that yeah. <laughs> puts that banner out there. But it <laughs> does. Yeah. I mean, it, it. I'm. I'm glad that that tells our yeah. community, yeah. hey, we have this available. Because all kinds of people are going down that road in right. grief. They are. One of the most probably interesting situations that we had happened to us happened last fall. We we're sitting there, and the class has already started. So out of the blue, this guy walks in, and he is totally totally devastated mm. and he comes into our class and i find, find out what his name is and i'm trying to think maybe how do i handle this from the leader's point of view because none of us know who he is or anything and he said he was driving by down the road and saw that and decided to come in that night he saw that and decided to come in it turned out what he was going through was not the grief from the death of a loved one but grief of the death of not death, but loss through divorce. Mm. So what we did, we brought him in, and he went to our class completely the whole night with us, and he talked at the end, and he was severely, severely broken mm. down, crying and going through everything. And then we hooked him up with Larry Cooper. Yeah. And he started going to divorce care. So you never know. The Lord is always going to surprise us with things. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> 
<laughs> you never know what's going to happen. And <clears throat> so I'm sitting here later, you know, my mind's going a million miles a minute. You know, how do I handle this situation? <laughs> but it turned out fantastic. And just wow. think about the opportunity of somebody to find help by, right. uh, by us being here right? and by us, I'll give Al a big hand here, us having <laughs> these helping ministries. ministries. Well, we live in a hurting world. We do. A very broken world. And it's exciting that we get to offer them the hope of Jesus Christ Absolutely. in life, we're just, new life. We're happy to be here. And just, we'd reach out again and appeal to everyone listening to this. Anyone you know, please contact us. Please bring them. Please let us know about it. Because I've been through this. That's probably my 10th session right now. And ever, I never walked out of a session at the end of it and says, Lord, Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this session because I can see people walking out of that room so different than they were the first night they came. Wow, wow. that's exciting. The, the healing journey is not complete. Right. But they're seeing that there is. But there's a foundation. There's hope. And, there's and they direction. understand grief and there's a hope. Yeah. Well, I, and I think that is a great summary of <laughs> grief share. I mean, you can't wrap it up better than that. But I mean, I think that's. I'm. I'm thrilled that you have been able to spend some time with us today and to talk more about Grief Share because it is a very important ministry. If you have questions about Grief Share or if you want to get involved, you've heard the plea <laughs> from both Tony and Al about being involved, or if you just have questions, you can go to our website, um, westparkbaptist.org slash grief share and there's a way to contact us on there or call the church and um, we'd be more than happy to answer questions but again thanks so much for being with us today Tony thank you for having me and I look forward to seeing what the Lord does with this thanks thank you very much thank you for listening to impact the world follow us on Instagram or Facebook just look for the profile West Park Baptist's